Jess found herself stuck, struggling to be consistent with workouts, reactive about meals and cooking instead of proactive and actually finding time to plan. And she was just exasperated day after day after day. She wanted to feel like she had it together instead of desperately grabbing at random chunks of time to get things done and leaving her just feeling stressed. So on this weight loss kickstart call, what you get to listen into today is digging into the dirt, digging into what's really going on and figuring out what was keeping her stuck and finding a solution, a simple one she could sustain. The way this mama can take back control of her mornings without sacrificing sleep. So when the day gets crazy, she no longer gets stressed or overwhelmed or thrown off her consistency. If you need help doing this and figuring out what is keeping you stuck, make sure you go book a weight loss kickstart call with me today so we can do exactly what we do on this call, but for your situation, for your circumstances and find you your one thing. Let's go listen in. Hey mama, welcome to the Tough Love Mom Podcast. I know you're here because you're ready to get consistent and finally lose that weight and you're not afraid of a little tough love. You know what to do to lose weight, but following through on those things feels impossible. You wish you could just feel like your strong, confident self again and want to be a good example for your little ones, but you get thrown off by mom guilt and the unpredictability of motherhood. It's frustrating. Taking on your journey postpartum is hard, but it's not impossible. Hey, I'm Liz, and I've been where you are. I gained a lot of weight in my pregnancies, 90 pounds and then 60 pounds. I needed to lose that weight to take control of my health and honestly just wanted to feel like myself again. With a sustainable approach to weight loss, simple consistency, and working on my mindset, I lost it all in just over a year both times, and I'm here to help you do the same. I believe that we have an ingrained ability to figure out what we need to do, make it happen, and do it in a way that awes the world. If you're ready to stop falling off the wagon, create solid routine and healthy habits, and finally feel your best inside and out, all while enjoying dino nuggets on your salad, you are in the right place. We're about to transform your journey, my friend. Get pumped up. It is tough love time. First off, how have you been? Like the past? A lot of big new changes started. So I'm getting ready to start. Um, my mm-hmm. husband took a new position at work that's put him from like more of a normal Monday to Friday to a shift schedule. Got it. And we finished our first week of that last week. And we're getting ready to go into week two. Um, every 30 days, they're going to ask him, do you want to keep doing this? So wow. that's interesting. And I'm getting ready to start homeschooling um, <laughs> our oldest. <laughs> um, his last day at private school is March 18th. So oh, yeah, that's been a bumpy ride um, this year. So we've just been praying about it and felt led to um, just kind of bring it home. But trying to be more intentional about food. I had a couple of really bad days where I just, I mean, like face planted off the wagon, ate like crap, felt like crap. Um, I keep flopping in the nutrition department. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's, is it more of the nutrition side of things that you're like, why can't I stay consistent with this right now? Is that the part that's frustrating you the most? I know I can do it because I like to eat good food. I don't necessarily like to eat crap food. I'm struggling with six year old, one year old. I'm kind of, I'm like, I, I'm almost always single parenting. Like I'm manning all the things, finances, upkeeping the house, trying to take care of myself and the kids. So I'm trying to get back into planning ahead because it does help. Like when I meal prep and plan the week, the meals do go smoother. So I know it works. I just need to make sure that I always can have that planning time. Does that make sense? Yeah. To walk me through it. Okay. So weekend, you're sitting down to plan. Take me day by day how that goes on weeks so that it's we, gone well. On weeks that it's gone well, we went to church Sunday, came home, had lunch, laid the baby down. Husband and eldest go outside to do man things. And I sit down, <laughs> I <love laughs> literally. That. Um, if the house needed to be cleaned outside, they would be awesome helpers. So I usually sit down with a late, I usually miss coffee and breakfast on Sundays. And when we get home, I'm having like that. 
a cup of coffee and some sort of brunch, you know, eggs, toast kind of thing. And I'll sit down with my calendar and I'm like, okay, what do we have this week? Doctor's appointments, what bills are due? What's the checking account balance? Okay. What groceries do I already have here? All right. What meals am I going to make for Monday through Saturday? And I always try to leave in two leftover nights. So the fridge doesn't get totally bogged out. Totally. And you're not like throwing away food because there are. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, And then I'm usually at the grocery store twice a week, once for those things that like I meal planned and I'm like, oh wait, I needed taco shells or I needed like the onesie twosie items that I was short on for the recipes I picked out. And then I have to get the baby's milk. And so that's why I'm there twice. It's because usually the second trip is really light. It's like we ran out of bananas. We need more milk and blueberries were on sale, you know? And the part I'm flopping on is I need to be better about giving that time to plan. And if I could, I've been so starting, it's already started unintentionally night shift calls me to not sleep well. So I've been waking up two hours earlier than I previously had been. Um, and it's kind of stuck. So I'm going to keep that going Cool. and I'm going to try to do my plan in the, in the morning versus after everything. And I need to plan my workout time in as well. I think I, at this point, I really have to just really be like, here's my day and put things in priority number, not necessarily like the time of the day, but just, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to read I'm going to work out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to meal prep for whatever, you know, leafy veggies or whatever needs to be prepped for dinner time. I don't know. I just feel like I have to do a lot of prepping at this point because my husband's schedule is going to be so flip-flop. I will be the only thing constant, if that makes sense. Yeah. And when, when you feel like you get to the point where it's like, okay, it is time to work out or it is time to eat lunch or it is time to make dinner. When you get to those times of day, Do you feel like if you didn't prepare for it ahead of time, do you feel like if you didn't prepare for it ahead of time, you can't follow through on what you had planned for? Yes. There's there have. Yes. Cause it never fails that that's the day that like neither child wants to play with their toys for at least 15 minutes, you know, to to give you that, you to hold them. (laughs) Yeah. And Eleanor is like so interested in the kitchen, which is cool, but she wants to like touch the oven and I'm like, dude, hot, 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 you know? Um, so I told my husband, I was like, I used to be a very quick could, I can still wing it pretty good, but Mm -hmm. I felt more collected and having kids and a husband, no offense. I love my husband so much, but getting married, having kids, I feel like my collection has like gone out the window and I'm trying desperately to like grab it back, even though I'm grabbing chunks at a time, you know, like certain things are going really well and then that'll flop and then something else will go really well and that'll flop. Uh, I'm just trying to draw it all back in and simplify, like, cause I I need simple right now. Super simple. I went like four days without a shower last week. It was bad. (laughs) And I was, I was mentally at that point where I was like, dry shampoo can't save this. A bird bath is not helping anymore. And I want to murder someone <laughs> if I don't get in the shower. <laughs> like, what does your day-to-day look like? Like, what's the, I mean, you don't have to give me like a minute by minute layout because I know it's different every day, but what, what's kind of like the flow to your day? For the next week, because Eli's only in school, well, this week, next week, I get up around 6.30 and you don't have to give me like super detail, but you get up around six 30. When do the kids get up? Um, they try to usually wake up when they hear me up. Okay. So they're up around the same time as you. Yeah. And okay. then we just, we get into breakfast and getting ready for the day. And I take the oldest to school, come back, snack for the little one, lay her down. And then it's, I usually get an hour and a half to a two hour nap. And that's usually when I can throw in a little laundry, drink my pre-workout run through a workout, grab a quick shower. She wakes up, do lunch. And then I do my job. I work from home. Yeah. And I do my job on her second nap. Okay. And then pick up 
So, but I'm driving an hour. I lose two hours. Oof. Yeah. 30 minutes one way. So got a good commute in there. Yeah. So that's going to go away. That's nice. Cause I'll, we'll be home. And then the evening's really fast paced. Right. I feel like that's the most blur. My son knows he needs to unpack his backpack and change his clothes and wash his hands. And meanwhile, I'm like, okay, the baby's good for a minute. I'm going to start dinner or, you know, get whatever needs to get in the oven. And then everybody's, we usually eat between five and six and then six thirty-seven. there's showers and baths. And yeah. I, I try my best not to push my workout till the evening. Cause I'm really not motivated to move much, but I do try the last week I've been doing all the dishes, like doing a reset in the main living area mm, before I sit my, yeah, before I sit my butt down to try to like read a little bit or work on something. If my husband's home and like, there's something we need to do together. Yeah. I try to do that. So what's the number one thing that you want to work on that you want to get in place first? A better routine. Okay. We can do that because making sure you're working out consistently, you know, making sure that what you're planning to eat gets eaten, all of that stuff. If we try to tackle all those at once, you're going to feel like you're continually what you said, grabbing chunks. Yeah. (laughs) Slowly been losing over the years. And you're going to still feel that feeling of failure. And I don't want you to feel that way. I want you to feel like, okay, I'm gaining some ground back (laughs) from what I feel like I've been losing. So routine. Cool. What do you feel like is the biggest pain point with your routine right now? Specifically, do you think there's one area or one time of day that you're like, if I can gain control of that, what's like one time of day where you're like, if that could change, I think some other parts of the day would be able to change too. If I could get it control of the morning where I could carve somehow like morph myself out of my bedroom into the main living space without the two kids waking up like I need to beat I need to beat them up by at least an hour if not two which I know that makes me like a complete early bird but I feel like my soul would be a happier soul if I could do some of those tasks that my brain just really needs to focus just on those tasks. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Cause when I work out early, I will skip coffee and not even need it. Cause the yeah. workout gets me through. I drink, I'm good at water, but when I've been up ahead of them, when the rest of the day may go haywire may, I should win the rest of the day goes haywire. Uh, I can, I roll with it a whole lot better. Okay. I'm, I'm more, um, quick on my feet to like, okay, this is fine. You know, like, we'll just do this or it just, the stress level is a better, like, I don't want to say good stress, but it's more manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So totally normal for kids to wake up around six 30. That's when my boys wake up. That's like their normal wake up time. So this is something where if you want that time, you just got to get up earlier And the quickest way to start getting up earlier is to go to bed earlier. You have the quickest way to start making that change. You just got to force yourself to get in bed, go to sleep, which means there's going to be one day where you start that transition over where you're going to get less done that day because you're going to sacrifice those to do things that are keeping you up late. So you can finally get up a little bit earlier the next morning. And the hard part is like, if you want an hour, let's say that puts you up at five 30 instead of six 30. You know, it's really hard to make that jump of a whole hour, even if you yeah. do fall asleep earlier, just because of being so physiologically being so used to getting up at a certain time, it does take a little bit of baby stepping or if you do need to just rip the bandaid off, yeah. and get up earlier. It's going to be really, really, really difficult until it's not. And that day will just kind of come, but I do think baby stepping it back is much easier over time, makes it more sustainable. But yeah, getting up earlier, I think would be a great place to start and make that your one thing. So that's our whole goal right now is to identify what your one thing you're going to focus on is, because if you can do that, all of your things will fall into place. I don't want you to also be spreading yourself then to, okay, on Sundays, I also need to make sure I'm planning and prepping. And like, you have a lot on your plate already. You're transitioning to homeschooling. Your husband's transitioning his work schedule. You're going to be getting used to having two kids home all day. You know, you've got a job that has demands. And so you have all of that on your plate already. When it comes to your journey, I don't want you thinking about (laughs) 
adding anything else that you're not already doing habitually. If it's not a habit for you to plan meals on Sunday and, but if it is keep doing it, if that is just works into your day, well, it's not too difficult to just do, do it. But things like, let's say you get up earlier for, for a few days and you're like, okay, now I can also start adding this to my routine or trying to tackle this habit. No, I want you to focus on this one thing of getting up earlier for two weeks. You can't necessarily control exactly when you're going to be getting up every day. So let's put a few things in place to help you be get, getting up earlier, because this is one of those things where when I pick the one thing with people, sometimes it's really, really easy because it's in the middle of the day. And it's just something you have to remind yourself to do. Whereas this is something that you have to make the decision to respond to in the morning, right? Getting yourself actually out of bed. So let's set up something a little more specific of a trigger that will actually get you up and out of bed and like stumbling into the things that you want to be doing. Um, okay. Before we do, is there anything that you do for saying or the way your house is set up that you're like, if I am getting up earlier, it's going to wake my kids up. Or do you just think that's their wake up time and you're just waking up around the same time as them? So before this schedule change, my husband was normally up between four 30 and five. Wow. So they are kind of used to that. Um, I don't want to say the noise, but like that, the energy starting to move in the house, they sleep through that. Okay. But our, but our two dogs, <laughs> our two labs that have elephant feet in the morning, <laughs> um, they're in a weird, I think that's why the kids are waking up when I've been waking up is because the dogs have, are late. Mm, essentially to someone so, tending to them. Right. Earlier. So I told my husband, I'm like, gosh, if I could get myself up at your old get up time, I think that might help because the dogs would calm back down and just settle back down like they normally do. And the kids would ride it out till seven, like they used to. And that gives me that amount of time to take care of whatever I need to take care of. When have you been going to bed? (laughs) (laughs) 1130 or midnight. Okay. There's our last night I was in bed by 10. So that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> but there's our problem, because, right? It's all because the TV wasn't working. So we're like, we're just going to bed. <laughs> okay. 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 And your husband's getting home later than he used to. So are you trying to have more yeah. time with him? Yeah. So he has, it's shift work. So he'll be, he goes on day shift tomorrow, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for four days. And then he'll have a day or two off and then he'll go on night shift, 6 okay. p.m. to 6. So yeah. His own, I, I just have to like, I have to be this constant. I yeah. just have to hold my routine no matter what. Yeah. I feel like. Yes. Okay. So having, I'm in your shoes all the time. Just last week, my husband had to fly until six 30 in the morning. So Whew. I was like, well, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I really can't really sleep in cause the boys get up, but yes. Like what you just said there, if you need to be the constant, not just for your family and the beings, like the dogs and the humans in your house, but (laughs) you need to be the constant for yourself too, because ultimately, and like my husband and I talk about this all the time, because we're like sleep nerds. We think (laughs) sleep statistics and research is so interesting, but when your sleep schedule gets thrown off constantly or isn't where biologically your body's comfortable with being going to sleep a few hours after the sunset, waking up around dawn. Like if your body isn't doing that, it throws off a ton of other things. It can throw off our Mm -hmm. hormones. It can throw off our digestion. It can throw off our brain functioning, all of that stuff. And so it is really important that even though your husband's sleep schedule is going to be changing and probably unfortunately negatively affecting him when it's a sleep schedule that he's not used to, You can't sacrifice yours, ultimately your health, right? Right. Because of how his circumstances are. It's like you're letting essentially, sorry, tough love here. You can't let circumstances outside of what you're in control of dictate your day to day, because it sounds like it's affecting you stress-wise too. You feel like Mm -hmm. you're losing grip of all the things. And so on those weeks, and, and I'm not saying you have to do this or You don't have to, but personally, when my husband's on nights, I don't wait up and stay for like, I don't, I don't stay up late to spend extra time with them. 
you know, I go to sleep because I have to be up the next day to, to handle the kids and more responsibility does fall on my plate when his schedule is way off than mine. And yeah. it's definitely yeah. more stressful weeks when he's on nights, but you know, you do have to prioritize your health physically and mentally <laughs> as well, especially yeah. on those weeks. And so having a consistent routine that is not staying up super late. And like, even if he's on a regular schedule and you guys are, you know, hanging out at night and do that every once in a while, but it is really good to be getting to bed at a decent time. If you're wanting to get up early, cause there, you'll be able to function for a few days on five hours of sleep. But when you hit like day three or four, your body's going to make you sleep in. And then you're going to feel off because you didn't get up as early as you wanted to. So definitely worth the diligence of getting to bed. So with that being said, instead of making your one thing, getting up earlier, Let's make your one thing that you're going to focus on the next two weeks, getting to sleep at a certain time. Well, not sleep, but like getting into bed at a certain time. Um, okay. I know stinks. Cause you're going to be like, okay, there's going to be a day where I have to sacrifice getting the house all cleaned up <laughs> or whatever, which is fine. Like you'll have more time the next day. Cause you'll have other stuff knocked out. So do you feel like that's something you want to focus on over the next few weeks? Yes. Okay. Yes. What time would be good for you to 14 days in a row is what we're going to do. I think 9.30 used to be when I would. And that's okay. when I was, I was waking up really early. Okay. So I know cool. that that's a time that I can function. It's enough sleep, enough rest as I yeah. yawn. <laughs> Where, what's like the kind of average time right now? Of how long I sleep? I know, like when you're going to bed. It's been like 11, 30 or 12. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause I don't want to bump it back too, too far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Last night I went to bed at 10 and yeah. I didn't have any trouble falling asleep. Um, That's cause funny. I had been up, I had been up since, you know, six, six 30. So I am tired. I think I just get that, like the dry eyed stuck open, you know, yeah. <laughs> night owl. <laughs> yeah. Being metal not tired. <laughs> I will say too, that like different times of the month for a woman, you're going to be more tired than others. When I am right around my, my period, it's harder for me to wake up in the morning because I'm, I, my body like needs more sleep when I'm on my period. So just factor that into, if you're like, why is it so hard this yeah. week? Don't beat yourself up. It might just be the way your body's responding. When you, when your son comes home and start, you start homeschooling, it might be harder to wake up earlier and you might be tired earlier at night because you're dealing with a different kind of stress. So yeah. knowing those things is super important. Um, so let's make, I want we're going to set two times. Let's make okay. 10 PM. You're like, I'm going to drop what I'm doing and go get in bed. Cause it's 10 PM. That's your cut off Last your call. red line that you won't cross. <laughs> okay. And, and then let's make nine 30 would be like gold star, two thumbs up, but 10 PM is like, woo, drop everything, go to bed because I just need to go to sleep. Does that sound doable? Yes. Okay. So you're going to aim for nine 30 worst case scenario. You're in bed at 10. So that means if you Got guys it. are like hanging out, watching a show and it's nine 15 and, and your husband's like, let's watch one more. And you're like, okay, if we're going to watch one more, I'm going <laughs> to clean up during this episode. I'm going to clean yeah. up during this episode because I know once this episode's over, I'm going straight to bed, you know? Yeah. And communicate this. This is really important. <laughs> I could just do what they do and just, you know, Irish goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> an Irish goodbye. <laughs> You've never heard of that? That's when you just disappear. You you exit stage left, and it's like 15, 20 minutes before anybody realizes. Oh, wait, wait, where did Jessica go? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is so funny. Okay. Do you think this will help? Do you think 9 30, like non-negotiable is 10 p.m. will will be a bedtime that allows you to start getting up earlier? Because I don't want to set an exact wake-up time. Because if, if you get sick or if, you know, your period comes up or something happens where it's like, okay, I'm not up on time. I mean, yeah, I, think I don't want you to beat yourself big, up. I think this is going to be a big time improvement. And I honestly think the morning time part will kind of naturally happen. Yeah. I've never been much more than like seven, eight hours of sleep. I've never okay. been one that really goes, goes long, you know, unless I'm sick, but um, Yeah. Cool, cool. Do you use like an alarm or anything? So I have an alarm on my phone uh -huh. um, that I do. I do. It does make me wake up. I used to have a Fitbit and I, the, I would use like the vibrate setting or whatever. 
but that took a that tanked and I haven't replaced it yet because I'm on the fence of like getting a Apple watch or getting another um, Fitbit. <laughs> gotcha, so. gotcha. I use a phone alarm called sleep cycle. Uh-huh. You keep your phone next to you, which I know a lot of people say is not ideal, but I've used this for like almost eight years now and it's phenomenal. Um, but basically it senses your sleep cycle. So it can tell us when you're, it can tell when you're in like a state of deep sleep or in REM and it can tell when you're in a light sleep and it's ideal to wake up when you're in a light sleep stage, because that's the closest you are when you're sleeping to being awake. And so if you wake up in that sleep, in that point of your sleep cycle, you're, you're more energized. You're not waking up groggy. Um, cause you're not getting woken up from REM sleep or a state of deep sleep. So it's a free app, but it's called sleep cycle. And basically you just set your latest wake up time. It will wake you up by that time, but also at any, your alarm will go off at any point, 30 minutes prior based on when you're in your lightest stage of sleep. So do you put it on like your mattress under your pillow or my nope, night just on the nightstand right close. next to, right next to me, you use a sound. So, okay. I was going to say my nightstand's like super duper close. Yeah. My same. Yeah. yeah. That's perfect. And you just make sure it's charging. You keep, you turn the lock screen on and it's got like really nice, like alarm wake up. Okay. Sound too. But it like Check gradually, it the volume gradually goes up too. So it very gradually wakes you up and you're in a very light sleep stage. So it makes getting out of bed just a little more pleasant in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I also heard somebody say, um, when you first wake up, count to five, one, two, three, four, five, and put your feet on the ground. Like yeah. don't let yourself wake up and be any in bed any longer than that or something like that. Yeah. Well, and actually it's cool because your brain can't hold more than two thoughts at once. So if you automatically start thinking about something else or counting, you can't think about the reasons that you don't want to go get out of bed. You're only thinking about those numbers. And so you literally can make your body do whatever it needs to do. Cause you can't yeah. think about all the reasons that you're trying to justify staying in bed. To, to stay comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm tired right now. And I just immediately start praying and going, I am so grateful for this. And this is how the day is going to be because I'm deciding that right now. And I just like immediately change my state of mind because I know if I get out of bed and let my feet hit the floor in this negative Nancy attitude right now, I'm not going to have a good day. <laughs> So I like yeah. have to, I have to like lay there and think about the things I'm grateful for and why it'll be a good day and how awesome my life is. I just have to like, think about those things and go, all right, now I can get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, like, mind you, I'm like half asleep when I'm doing this, but it helps, it helps so much. So I'm going to add okay. to your homework to download sleep cycle. Okay. It's like a little orange, orange app, but it is super, super helpful. So, um, real quick. Before our time expires, I'm going to share yeah. my screen and show you the habit tracker. So do you have a printer at home? Yes, I do. Cool. We're going to talk about bed. We're bigger. Your one thing that you're going to write here and I'll send this in an email is getting to bed by 9 30, 10 o'clock is your red line that you won't cross. You ready to start tonight? Yes. Cool. Just decide now you're doing 14 days in a row of this. You will do it. What's really interesting about habits is it can take anywhere from a few days to a few months to make a habit. And what they've actually found is that those first few weeks, and it can be anywhere from like a few days to three weeks to four weeks, but those base days where you're first getting through it, take mental effort because you have to choose not to do certain things that you've been doing. You have to choose to do new things that you're not used to doing. And so it takes a lot more mental effort. And so those first few weeks are often times people are like, yes, I'm doing it or I'm not really doing it. And it's the weeks after those initial weeks where it becomes ritual, it becomes habitual. Your body biologically gets used to it. So those first weeks are important, but it's what you do afterwards that really makes a difference. So if you get through the first two weeks and you're like, I need to this for accountability to keep doing print another one and do it for two more weeks until you really feel like I am going to bed because this is my routine now. And I'm just exhausted. So that little side note there. And then you've got check-ins on day three, seven, and 10, where you're just going to reflect a little deeper. I want you to think about, okay, what's the hardest part of getting to bed at this time for me? Why am I struggling with this? Or why do I have to put forth a little more mental effort? What do I feel like I'm not getting done? Just journal that out on day three, seven, and 10. How did you handle that hard thing or what's feeling hardest about this? How are you coping with that or handling it? Write that there. 
And then the last question, because our brain always wants to focus on the negative and why things are hard. So I want you to shift your mind to what is going well and what are, are you doing well? Because that recognition of what we're doing ourselves goes such a long way. We're like the last person to pat ourselves on the back. So I want you to recognize how your one thing. So how getting to bed a little earlier is getting easier or if you're more excited to get to bed or if you're actually feeling really tired or if it's starting to feel like an identity for you, like actually just part of who you are and how you show up. The reason you're checking in at days three, seven, and 10 is because days one and two of a new habit are super easy for people because they're motivated. Day three is when a lot of people fall off. Same with day seven and same with day 10. So that's why you're going to check in on, and that's don't like get that in your head of, well, if I fall off on those days, it's okay. Cause you're not going to. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's why you're checking in with yourself. So you can both recognize why it's hard and address those things, but then also go, and I'm real doing really well with this because look at the growth I've made. And so it'll be really cool for you to reflect back on the previous check-ins too, when you get there. So, yeah. um, the biggest thing with this is you got to use this for 14 days straight. So where is the best place? And I'll send you a copy of that. Where is going to be the best place for you to keep that? And when do you want to do your tracking and your check-ins like what time of day I'm probably gonna tape it on my mirror okay like where you brush your teeth or something yeah physically like I'm gonna tape it on my mirror and then I'll probably do my reflection questions would be in the morning okay so like on day four eight and eleven like the day after you get Mm -hmm. that one thing done cool I'm just putting this down in your homework section. So you don't have to remember <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got one, you. One thing to remember. Cool. Can you get this printed today then? So you can start tonight. Yes. Mm-hmm. So wheat, when you're brushing your teeth and getting ready for bed, just cross off that day because you're getting in bed at that time. Um, which is the biggest thing and basic things. Like if you open up your phone, when you're about, when you, once you get in bed, Think about putting it down, pick up a book. If that's something that you habitually do, set yourself up for good sleep success that night. Yeah. But I'm excited for you. Do you have any questions about the habit tracker or diving into this? I feel like once you get up in the morning, you're going to be like good to go with the other parts of your journey, fitness. Mm-hmm. And, but again, don't overstress about those right now, because I want you to just really focus in on getting to sleep. Okay. I don't think I have any questions. I feel like the first part of our catch up kind of just help bring some clarity. So cool. Well, I'll send you an email by uh, the end of today. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Today. Yes. So good to talk with you. Isn't it so awesome how simple that solution is? It's so encouraging to actually find something sustainable like that, that you can do that will actually make change. So if you're ready to lose weight and actually feel confident in what you're doing, that it will make change. And if you wish there was a simple way to stay consistent, this will help. So let's get on a weight loss kickstart call and let's get you going. Before you go, thank you for spending this time with me on the Tough Love Mom podcast. If this episode encouraged you in any way, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a review, letting me know how this show has impacted you. Then send this episode to another mom friend or take a screenshot, post it on social media and tag me so I can personally thank you for helping me on this journey to impact thousands of moms. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you, sister. Until next time, get after it.